What is up Brick fans? The day has finally come where I can show you the fully completed and totally awesome build that I've been working on for the last two months. So welcome everybody to the abandoned village on the planet Zepho. This mock is based on the 2019 Star Wars video game Jedi Fallen Order which has one of the best Star Wars stories that came out in the recent years. If you haven't played it yet, you should definitely give it a shot. Now if you haven't seen the previous episode of this series in which I was showing the work in progress of this build, I will leave the link to the whole playlist in the description of this video so you can catch up with all the steps I took to create this awesome model. Oh and by the way, if this is your first time here, you should really consider subscribing and staying here for longer. I create a lot of different builds in many different LEGO themes so everyone should find something interesting for themselves. But enough of that, right? You came here to see the finished mock, so let's not waste any more time and just jump straight into the build itself. And man, I am so happy of how the build turned out in the end. To be honest, I had my ups and downs during the building process, because there were a few elements that I didn't like about it, but I'm glad I stick to what I committed to, because in the end, it just might be one of my favorite builds so far. The overall idea of the build was to recreate one of my favorite locations of the game as close as possible, and during this review I'm going to compare what I've built to what we can actually see in the game. The main focus of the mock itself is of course Cal Kestis who is fighting a bunch of stormtroopers on the village courtyard, and since they are no match for a Jedi, he is handling the battle pretty good. You can see a scout trooper charging towards his enemy while his body is already pushed by Cal with a force. I used some of these bandit trans elements to show the motion as not only the trooper is flying away, but also some debris that was lying on the ground. These parts are also used to place the blaster bolt flying towards the Jedi, but this won't probably end well for the shooter as one of the bolts was already reflected by Cal and hit one of the troopers in the chest. These are of course not all of the foes our hero has to face, as we can see one more trooper preparing to shoot from the opposite side and three more are running towards the battle to help out the rest. But not to worry, because Cal is already being alerted by his fellow droid BD-1 who is keeping watch from the edge. I really had a blast setting up the battle scene using all of the figures, but they are just an addition to the build itself, which took a lot of work and no less bricks, so let's focus on what I actually spend most of my time on, shall we? And maybe let's start the tour with the thing that stands out the most, that is the tower. If you've seen the previous episodes, then you know that it wasn't an easy task to make the structure of the tower. I used a pretty complex technique to make the round shape using a lot of brackets inside, but in the end it is exactly what I wanted it to look like. The outside walls of the tower are covered with some details as much as it was possible to do given the way I built it, while the top is just a mess. And I'm not talking about the look of the model, but the integral structure of the source material. As you can see the hole on the top is in a bit different place than in the game, but I decided to make it facing the courtyard as it's looking a lot better from this angle. The inside of the tower also has some details like the rusted rod sticking out and the debris laying all around. I am still learning how to make Lego ruins look realistic, but I think I'm starting to get a hang of it. And the best decision I could make here is the color of the roof. I had to buy all the sand blue elements used in this mock, but they were worth the price as the roof is now looking almost identical to the one in the game. Going down, we have another element made in sand blue that is the broken part of the bridge that used to be here. It may look quite simple, but I had to take a few tries to figure out the curvature of it, but in the end I really like the way it looks. And again, the color here really gets the job done. I've decided not to make the railing here because of the lack of the elements being produced in sand blue, 
and I didn't want it to look apart. From the bottom you can see some rods and pipes sticking out of what is left of the bridge and all is overhanging a nicely textured brick wall growing out from the rocky mountain and covered all around with some moss. Now before I'll show you the detailed view of the building that is above the wall, let's jump to the other side of the tower and see how the structure is looking from that side. And yes, we also have a brick wall here covered with moss, but this time it also have a few windows and it's actually a foundation for a smaller house. This one is actually just a part of the one featured in the game, but I wanted to make the scene as close to the source material as possible, so I had to include at least the front wall. So the backside is not taken directly from the game, but rather inspired by other houses in the area, but I gotta say it came out really nice. And next to the house there is a pathway with the stairs leading up to the courtyard, on which the stormtrooper squad is running to assist the battle at hand. And this is the spot where I place one of the custom made stickers I've printed for the smog. Normally I'm a purist when it comes to building out of Lego, but unfortunately there were no other options to make the signs I wanted. I recreated the sign from a game, so it says this area is off limits. But I've changed the text below a bit since it wouldn't fit into the size I wanted, so instead of no selling or trading, it reads no Jedi allowed. But let's talk a little bit more about the house itself because I think I nailed the overall aesthetics of it. The walls may be a bit slanted in the game, but I really didn't have much space inside the structure to make them perfectly, but at least the columns are accurate and all is covered with a lot of moss just like the source material. The top part is also recreated very nicely in my opinion. The little balcony is covered with grass and dirt, there are a few antennas sticking out of the roof and there is even a loot crate for our hero to search through when the battle is over. And let's just focus on the antennas for a second because they are holding a couple of flags. So while one of them is just a regular molded flag, the other one is built entirely out of clips. I saw this idea some time ago on Flickr and I wanted to try it out ever since. I think it's looking pretty nice especially because it can be freely formed as it would be fluttering in the wind. Alrighty then, now let's finally switch to the other side and the biggest structure in the build. This part was the one I was mostly looking forward to. On one side we have a regular household like others all around the village, but the right side is going into the mountain with a doorway embedded into the rocks. This part of the mountain is made in the same style as the rest of the rock work I made, with some moss here and there and the collapsed doorway which came out even better than I expected. Going to the left side the mountain has ended and we have a brick house embedded into it. I think the transition came out pretty nice even though I had to compress all the structures because of the lack of space. But the overall structure is preserved with all of the slanted columns and some minor details on the walls. And yes, this time all of the walls are slanted as well. I had some more space on the inside so I was able to use this technique which made the walls more similar to the ones in the game. And the banner here is yet another custom printed sticker, which I recreated from the one in the game, but made the colors a little more vibrant to fit the LEGO color palette. The upper side of the building is my own creative approach, because as you can see here the original is just covered in grass and I didn't want to waste so much precious space. So I've made a balcony to place the troopers here, who are firing at the Jedi. I've also changed the top part as well and not make another round tower here, but instead I place some grass on the top of the curved structure. I think this makes a great finish to the top, especially because I just love to put grass stems like this, creating a nice change from flat and smooth green spots elsewhere. And last but not least, there is something more on the backside of the whole build, an interior of the house. I always try to incorporate the inner part of the buildings in my mocks, so this one couldn't be different. It was a bit tricky because none of the houses in the game have an interior and there wasn't much I could base it on, but I've decided to make a simple imperial storage here. Just a bunch of crates and containers and some scrap laying on the floor for which I used some of my broken pieces. If you're wondering what to do if your lego breaks, this is a good way to go. 
And finally, I placed Lego lights on the ceiling so you can see the scared Stormtrooper better, who is running to get his helmet and blaster to help out in the battle on the courtyard. And that, my friends, is the whole tour of my take on the abandoned village on the planet Zepho. This mock was a lot of fun and even though I had a little crisis while building it, I'm glad I endured to the end because, like I said, it might just be one of my favorite builds so far. But that doesn't mean I'm going to stop here. A new idea is already waiting in my head, so as soon as I disassemble this one, I will get to building. And if you're wondering what it will be, I can give you a little tease. Many of you seem to enjoy my Red Dead Rebriction mock I did a year ago, so my next mock will be a western build. Nothing too big, because I want to make something that doesn't last that long, but I'm thinking about remaking one of the classic western sets. But I won't spoil which one, so you'll have to wait and see for yourselves. And with all that said, we have reached the end of today's video guys. I want to thank you all for sticking out to the very end and I hope you enjoy the whole series. Now I'm waiting for your feedback in the comment section below. Give me your thoughts on the build. What did you like the most? Or what do you think I could do better? And of course leave a like if you enjoyed this video and come back soon because there will be also a short cinematic showcase of this build on the channel as well. Until next time guys, stay safe and keep it brickin'.